for next panel discussion on the topic of institutionalization of crypto markets please welcome with a huge round of applause a panel moderator miss marina saroka founder planet lambo miss marina is the founder of planet lambo the web3 agency which helps brands find a place in the metaverse after having worked for more than 15 years with global brands in the digital field such as coca cola mastercard visa l'oreal general general mills toyota sony and real madrid she combines all her expertise in marketing and advertising with a passion for the metaverse and the nfts to help build the web3 industry madam graduated from the first edition of real Academy, me a global metaverse and business certification program ladies and gentlemen she was recognized as a women to watch by adag in 2018 and as a top marketer under 39 in latin america by scopein at latina at this point i would request all of you to join us together for a panel discussion miss saroka it's over to you now thank you very very much please Let me welcome the rest of the panel as well. Here we have uh, Rahego Paul Menon. He's vice president of marketing of Wasir X, India's largest cryptocurrency exchange. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining. Also, Nimesh Patel, CEO, founder of Kabuni. Kabuni, you will tell us more about it, but you uh, focus in blending academic and experiential immersive learning in a safe metaverse. Thanks, Marina. Okay. Pleasure to meet you. And we also have Pritam, the CEO and founder of Sot.io, which is the which tokenized real world assets. Hey, Marina. Welcome, Pritam. Thank you. So here we are. We are going to have good questions here, and please, Rah, I would love to start with you, and I would li like to ask you about the current state of institutional adoption of crypto in India. What can you tell us about it? Um, thanks, Marina. A really interesting question. Um, in India, uh, as in the world over, crypto is at a very interesting um, space. uh you know you have uh, the government uh, you know which is yet to make up its mind on how uh, to embrace crypto uh, you have a central bank that has made its uh, position on crypto very very clear um but uh, in spite of that uh, you have a lot of interesting uh, developments happening in this space the consumer space it's extremely clear that indians love crypto we are one of the largest and the fastest adopters of crypto in the world according to a chain analysis report um but you know the crypto winter is here so you know things are a little low here uh, this is coupled with a couple of uh, government uh, tax laws that have come into place um so the in the the sentiment is not very positive uh, if i may say so but from an institutional point of view there are a lot of interesting things happening the rbi has just announced that uh, uh, you know they've announced a concept paper for cbdcs so you have the biggest institution in the country that is actually now uh, making a concept paper for crypto that is one but in the covid pandemic itself you had regional governments actually issuing your covid certificates on the blockchain so you have a lot of interesting experiments happening at an institutional level uh, even banks are taking to crypto because uh, you have a bunch of private sector and public sector banks 15 of them the largest banks in india coming together to do a blockchain project to 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 make intra bank settlements faster convenient cheaper and more effective so in a nutshell um things are looking very uh very bright uh, in the you know if i could say so but uh, you know the it it the it will take some time uh you know for the snow to melt uh, and the sun to shine and uh, you know we are all keeping our fingers crossed here when it comes to uh you know crypto space both at an institutional and at a consumer level thank you rak and you mentioned something about the winter the crypto winter what do you think about it do you think it will hamper the institutional adopt, adoption of crypto um 
actually uh, you know we in the crypto space look at crypto as uh, it, it is our universe but if you look at the world beyond crypto the world is not uh, in such a good place when it comes to the macro economic environment i was just reading this morning that uh, you know uh, there are 100 year old companies that uh, in germany that survived the the vmr uh, collapse uh, you know those guys are going under and these are institutional companies you know they've been there for 100 150 years they are going under so the real world is in a big problem you, you know the uk prime minister has just designed uh, as we speak uh, you know inflation is in double digits in most advanced countries um, so things are uh, you know things are things are in a state of flux uh, we, you know so we look at for our for us the world is crypto but the whole wide world is also in a state of a uh, crypt is it's in a state of winter um, and we are a part of that ecosystem uh, but what is going to happen here is that uh, you know this will separate uh, the men from the boys or from the women from the girls uh, you know if i have to be uh, correct <laughs> uh, but um, you know uh, this is the best time for uh, the the companies that survive this winter the companies that build innovative products the companies that manage to uh, you know look after their costs really well uh you know it do interesting stuff just to just to survive now it's become a a question of survival for a lot of companies uh, not only in india but the world over because uh, you know when you talk about crypto exchanges volumes in india are at an all time low um so the focus for most of us here at this point of time is to just survive it out is to draw road maps to survive the crypto winter um and we were in a similar situation uh, in 2018 uh when rbi had banned uh, crypto you know rbi is the reserve bank of india and they had banned crypto and we came out stronger so i am very confident um that uh, you know this winter uh, will pass and uh, the sun will shine thank you raj i will come back to you with more questions in a minute but nimesh i really want to get to know more about the metaverse and what is your definition about the metaverse We can't listen to you. You you are in mute. That would help if I was off mute. Hi, Marina. Thank you. That's a a very big question. I'll shortly give you my opinion of what it is, but I think at a macro level, I think the world is still trying to kind of grapple with the understanding of what the metaverse will mean to you as an individual, you as a brand, and even you as a government. My simplistic view is in 2014 i saw a hospital using holographic technology and when i saw the impact of it on children my view was that it will change the world and i defined it dancing with your pixels for me when we talk about the metaverse if you're dancing with your pixels in augmented reality or virtual reality that is for me an experience that we should define as a metaverse and if we kind of go back pre 1995 we went from print radio tv to this beautiful thing today that we're communicating on a 2d screen um on streamyard but my kids kids will look at this era as out of date because they will be immersive children enjoying content in 3d and and that for me is my definition of the metaverse but i'm sure there's many other smarter people that will give their own different opinions to that definitely that that's a point and why do you think it's pivotal for crypto look i think i have a strong view on look i think when we talk web3 again as a macro um and then you start breaking those protocols down into blockchain into the metaverse in ar vr and 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 many other elements the biggest thing crypto needs is it needs products that are mainstream adoption right if if my mom can understand it and use it for something that's practical in the real world that she has then we're going to see a, a different type of adoption rate that we have today and then coming back directly to your question in the metaverse you have a high possibility of utility you can create so many transactional emotional moments to create the use of crypto 
in the metaverse that put the metaverse together with crypto, whether it's a token or a currency, you effectively have much more utility that you can demand from your community. Therefore, you can create mass adoption and more users to use it. And until, look, I, I say this to every crypto enthusiast, whether you're at an exchange, somebody coming into crypto, we all know that this will be mainstream adoption. Some people will say five years, some people will say 20 years. Let's just say it's 10 years from today. So your real customer is my son, Caden, who is 11 years old. And who is teaching him to use crypto effectively today? So until we all look at the ecosystem and say, this next generation, which is Gen Z, then it's the alpha generation, how are we educating them? And what are we developing for them that's going to get them excited? I think we will miss the chance of adoption. Great, great, great answer. We'll come back to you. Now, Brighton, your turn, please. I would like to know more about asset tokenization. What can you tell us about it? So asset tokenization is, you know, um, one of the things for me, like as, as we uh, build Zoth is, you know, for crypto and the Web3 economy to grow, it has to matter more and more in our day-to-day -day life, in our real world uh, implications. And I think one of the areas where there, what we are seeing a lot of interest is primarily tokenizing real world assets. So uh, for example, say tokenizing real estate, are private equity and bringing them on chain. Uh, I think um, for the whole Web3 economy, this brings an opportunity to bring assets which are very difficult to get uh, in the current financial um, markets uh, on chain and provide an opportunity to create an economy around it. And I think that's going to be a big opportunity area for the whole Web3 community globally, close to 16 trillion worth of real world illiquid assets which are currently not being traded in any financial market can be brought on chain and that's a big opportunity for uh, uh, the whole web3 community and how is the difference from pure crypto play so i think um, see crypto is obviously if you look at um, uh, a standard ico it's a backed by a project and there is uh, means, you know, it's ultimately a project as it grows and it creates value. That's how the value of the underlying token gets created. And, you know, there has been some projects have done well, uh, like Matic, some projects, you know, majority of the projects don't. Um, however, in case of real world asset tokenization, the tokens are primarily backed by an underlying asset. In case of, say, real estate, it is backed by the asset value and the token representative fraction of the asset value. If it is art, it represents a fraction of it, uh, vice versa. So, so an owner of a token and, and, uh, ultimately buys a piece of an asset which physically exists, which appreciates or, you know, depreciates in value and the, has a real world usage and implication. I think that's the fundamental difference between um, uh, say, uh, pure native cryptocurrency and asset backed tokens, they also are um, uh, creating and boosting the whole stable coin uh, economy uh, of creating not just a basket of currencies and stable coins on top of it, but also, but kind of providing multiple assets with tangible value, which on which assets can be backed. And I think that's, that's a quite big play as, as it shapes up. Right. Thanks. Right. Um, Rah, I would like to know more about regulation and crypto. What are the next steps? What can you tell us about it? Your mic. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, Marina, what we have to remember is that um, innovation always precedes regulation. So, you know, you have a bunch of crazy people who experiment in their garages, uh, come up with something fantastic uh, and then uh, you know uh, the agency stepped in the government step in and then they start regulating um, everything um, so it's the same same stage in crypto so all the greatest inventions in uh, finance uh, were, were innovations uh, and regulations happened you know whether you talk about uh, you know the travel rule or you talk about uh, all the AML measures that are in place 
uh, I have all come after the project was invented. So the point is that uh, you know we ca- you know innovation the uh, the regulation will happen. It is uh, it is definite. Now it is the scale of regulation or how light or how hard it is that is going to make a difference. So uh, the best thing about regulation is that we know it is inevitable. Uh, there is a G20 conference which is happening coincidentally in India uh, in this month uh, in October or in November, where the draft rules uh, of the G20 countries are going to be framed around crypto. So now no company, so countries cannot now sit on the fence and say we, you know, it's it's uh, you know on the uh, and decide whether or not to regulate crypto. They have to go for it. They have to take a position uh, on crypto, and that's happening like re- like in the next couple of months so uh, i see a lot of action happening in this space when it comes to regulation and both and all of us know that there is this wall of institutional money waiting for this regulation to happen because uh, you know most of the pension funds for example they cannot uh, you know they cannot invest unless uh, the rules are very clear now once regulation happens and what you can do and cannot do is crystal clear there is this wall of money that is just going to come into crypto uh, and uh, innovation and funding and uh, projects and everything is just going to take off uh, so it's going to be a very interesting couple of years uh, starting uh, you know 2020 2023 2024 um, where uh, you'll have regulation and then you'll have this whole wall of money that will come into the space right is this related to crypto cities as well? Um, it's actually it's a very interesting question that you're asking, uh, Marina, because uh, Balaji Srinivasan uh, is is talking about uh, a network state where like-minded people, and I think uh, you know Nimesh Nimesh's metaverse will also uh, be somewhat similar. So you can create a, a a state or a metaverse where like-minded people can all get together. A former DAO and participate in a metaverse uh, for a particular project. So you can be in, in in Poland or in India or in Australia or wherever you are. And what uh, binds you together is this belief uh, about this particular project. Um, so crypto is going to enable that. Metaverse is going to enable that. Uh, DAOs are going to enable that. Um, so you have different pieces of the puzzle that will fall really very beautifully uh, sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you, Rag. Nimesh, you bring into the metaverse a very interesting concept. You insist in building a safe metaverse. What is it exactly? Good question. Um, look, from our perspective, Kabuni is building a safe metaverse for education. And the age group is 8 to 16 in age. And if we learn our lessons from the invention of the internet, we've got many things wrong around child safety. And we are now going to see a serious set of measures starting in England with the online safety bill that if you are accessing children, then there has to be certain levels of safeguard in order to protect them. You know, we don't let children cross the road until we've shown them how to do it. We don't let children drink alcohol till a certain age. We don't let children into pubs, you know, we've, we've built all these safeguards for children. And here's this beautiful thing called the internet. And we are going to see a lot of serious issues with children as they move into their adult life for the past 20 years. So when we think of putting children into immersive experiences, I think you have to seriously understand if something goes wrong, the emotional, the physiological, the psychological impact of an immersive negative experience is much greater than it is on a 2D screen. So we took the decision four years ago to design a metaverse that's safe for children, which is hardware, software, and content, and a closed system from everything from onboarding to the actual experience and the moderation that will take place. Uh, So safety is our, our absolute priority. So every decision that we make, we have to ask the question, Will this leave the user in a negative place in the real world? And if the answer is no, then we have to work back and see how do we actually build that safely? Because, and then and I'll shut up, because business models today are built on putting us in a square screen, collecting as much data as they can, 
manipulating that data to bring us back with little to no care on how is that human going to be in the real world. And that is a serious challenge that I think Web3, not necessarily Web3, but the metaverse will actually have on children. So safety, safety, safety. And is there a difference between a centralized metaverse and a decentralized metaverse in terms of safety? Not when it comes to safety. I think you could find different points of view when you think of decentralization and centralization. We will have a combination of those um, to build out an ultimate experience and then ultimately allow children to port their identity, their accomplishments, their um, elements that they've created during the journey with us into, into areas that don't have a high threshold, threshold of safety. You know, I'm a father of four children and, and you build lots of safety around them to, to grow them up and unclip their wings. I think we have to have similar safeguards around the internet and eventually the metaverse. And it is one of the same, but that's an argument for another time. Thank you. Thank you, Nimesh. Pritam. Can we tokenize everything? <laughs> we can tokenize <laughs> everything. Uh, the question rep uh, presents is where it is more feasible and more, um, I would say, value generating uh, for the for the ecosystem. So you know, tokenizing, I would say, equities at this point doesn't make sense because they are already available, especially in the US. As fractions, there is already enough liquidity. Tokenizing real estate makes sense. You know, it reduces cost of acquisition. It helps in liquidating the assets faster. Uh, tokenizing art, tokenizing funding makes uh, you can get the Web3 crypto money to real world projects, finance them. That, that helps. So technically, answer is that yes, you can tokenize everything. But uh, you should see where the big opportunity lies and go after that first. And I think, you know, that opportunity itself is huge. I love your answer. I have to say it. This is a question for the three of you. And I am wondering in terms of crypto, in terms of tokens, in terms of metaverse, which are the main barriers to gain mass adoption? What do you think about it? Um, so I'll go first. Um, I think, uh, you know, this is uh, the the biggest hindrance is actually uh, uh, UI, UX design. Uh, currently, uh, and, you know, it will take time. And it, it's, uh, you, you know, the early internet was also not very easy to use. But it was much easier than uh, what crypto is at this point of time. Uh, you have... Roughly, I think, 100 million people worldwide on crypto. Uh, and crypto has been around for a long time now. You know, Bitcoin was uh, introduced into the world in 2009. We are in 2022. Uh, you know, I think uh, what we as an industry have to do is to take UI, UX design really very simply, uh, you know, and take it on a war footing. That is the biggest uh, adoption a hurdle for a lot of users because they simply cannot understand the concept of crypto. They don't understand the concept of wallets. Uh, you know, forget DEXs and DAOs. Let's not go there also. But uh, even why crypto is, is a big question that, uh, you know, one point, you know, you have 7.5 billion people in the world want an answer to. There has to be a really very good reason for people to get into crypto. There are a lot of reasons, but if they were compelling enough, they would have been in crypto at this point of time. Uh, you know, a, a, a SIM card with a mobile phone is a very compelling proposition. Till crypto becomes as simple as that and as utility driven as that, uh, we will be still grappling with this problem, in my opinion. Thanks, Raj. Namesh? Yeah, look, I echo the same with probably a hint of more around applications, you know, I still remember for me, you know, putting a CD-ROM into a computer, the modem dial up, you know, that noise, <laughs> three minutes, and, and then you've got this super ultra slow speed. And the reason I invested time to, to do that was there was a high motivation that I could connect to the World Wide Web 
and even do the basic things in, in, in the early adoption of the internet, we haven't yet developed enough applications that's going to allow the average person to go through the friction, right? I think you have to, to, you have to create better UI UX. That's a given. I think everybody can answer that. But we also have to create an emotional bind that I want to make that journey and that effort to actually unlock whatever I'm going to go into beyond another token that's going to fund another project for infrastructure that only 100 million people really understand. And of that, I'd say 10% truly understand. So I always come back to the mom test. Until you motivate my mom, you know, to take five minutes to figure out, we're not going to see mainstream adoption. So I think both power, both work streams are better mainstream applications that are going to give highly emotional reasons to do it and better UX UI and put them two together, we start to see a better adoption rate. Great point, great point. Pritam? So for me, as I mentioned earlier, that, uh, you know, crypto has to be relevant to us in a day-to-day -day basis. You know, am I able to buy milk using crypto? Am I able to do my day-to-day -day activities? You know, as it becomes more and more relevant, and I think we are seeing steps in this phase is where the whole economy will grow. There will be more users on the platform. See, I, I, uh, my experience has been with uh, a company like Budweiser and we launched Bud NFTs um, across uh, uh, the world, which were quite a big hit. And then we used stable coins also in one of the largest transactions in the world. But I strongly believe that it just uh, the entire Web3 economy is less than the valuation of Apple. So imagine the potential we have if we make ourselves relevant and that's the challenge we have currently how do you make it matter uh, and how what are the kind of opportunities where actually web3 can make a difference okay okay those are great answers and we have um, a couple of more minutes we can ask a, a last question maybe i would like to know or maybe to ask the three of you to mention a wish for 2023 related to the crypto market. I was actually, gonna say, I was actually going to say a president, a prime minister that's going to last more than five weeks, but I won't go there. Um, wish for 2023 um, in crypto. I'd like to see some... You know, it, um, Britham said buying milk, you know, it's simplicity is exactly what we need to create, right? When, and so in 2023, I would like to see projects that are going to build from the ground up something that is as simple as anybody can go and buy milk, right? When that's going to be groundbreaking because the rest looks after itself once that happens, right? Because the community builds as a movement, UI UX gets better, but that is what I would like to see. Okay, okay. Let's go for it. Freitam, I, I see you. You want to say your wish for 2023? Nimesh, Nimesh already told. I So actually today we launched a channel which, which called uh, Make Web3 Simple. See, for me... Uh, what I struggle, I struggle between two worlds. People who don't at all get what Web3 is and there are people who are like, you know, the whole mainnet, testnet and all of that. I really feel 2023 will be the year when the whole Web3 jargons would be simpler for, you know, if my if my 12-year-old teenager uh, uh, nephew can understand, that's my standard. That's why Web3 needs. Okay, Raj your wish and we end the panel yeah uh, thanks i'll go for a really simple wish uh, i think i want uh, clearer regulations world over when it comes to crypto um i uh, we all of us know that governments uh, uh, you know have a great uh, amount of stake in it uh, they can either crush it or they can at least make things very, very difficult. But the moment I think you have clear rules, uh, you know, a lot of things will happen by itself. So that's one wish that I would like to make uh, for crypto for all of us. 
Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Madam Marina and all the panel members. I think it was amazing. Another fantastic uh, discussion full of revelations and discovery. So some words that I've picked up from this discussion are keep it simple because simple is beautiful. Make it more usable. Make it more relevant. Add more of let it be a utility driver, etc. So in India, it's Diwali time. And very soon, uh, Santa would also come calling. So you never know when your wishes might turn true. And for the next new year, Year, which is uh, just on the harbinger so it might emerge as the utility driven world for the crypto warriors so on this note thank you ladies and gentlemen for having joined us